Now, hopefully we're clear now. Because I believe today that we're on a threshold of something awesome. Now, I'm not saying this is exclusive to the Rock Community Church. I'm not saying that God has only got plans for the Rock Community Church. That would be so wrong. That would be a lie. But I believe God's got plans for those who is willing to do what he's called them out to do. That's what I believe. So we could be here. It could be anywhere else. It could be in another state. All around the world in another country. God is looking for those who are saying, here I am. Will you be one that says, here I am. Will you be one that when the Lord calls out to you, you have that relationship with him so much to know that when he says something, you're like, here I am. That you hear that voice that calls out, that called out to Elijah. See, some of you are looking for some great big miracles today. You're looking for some great big answers. You're wanting to hear God speak to you audibly. You want to hear God do some awesome things in your life. You want to see written in the clouds what God wants you to do. You're wanting to feel the ground move a little bit. You're wanting the roof to just blow off the top of this place with the Shekinah glory of God. You're wanting all these great things to happen and you're looking for God in those great things. But God spoke to Elijah in a good, still, small voice. When God looked out and seen the tornado the big whirly bird out there, the twister, and he said, he realized God wasn't in that. When the earthquake shook the mountain that Elijah was on, he said God wasn't in that. But then he heard the still, small voice, and it said he took his cloak and covered his face, and he hit the ground, and God spoke to him. Do you have that relationship so much with God that when you hear that still, small voice, that all the noise and all the crud cr going on in the world, everything around the world, all the earthquakes, all the bad stuff going on, everything around you, that when God speaks to you with that still small voice, you just stop. That you listen. The more we want to listen to God, the more that Lord, the Lord deals with us, the more relationship we have with Him, the louder His voice gets, even though it's still small. It becomes more and more profound in our lives. God cares for you this much that He wants to talk to you. He wants to hear. He wants you to hear Him. He wants you to know when He's talking to you. Jesus said, I know my sheep. I know my sheep, and my sheep know my voice. So when the good shepherd comes in, they know me. I don't know if you understand that about the sheep pen. In the day and time when Palestinian shepherds would all bring their sheep into the sheep pen. I want you to listen to this. This is very profound when Jesus is talking about this. When all the sheep were brought into the sheep pen, there was different flocks in there. Do you understand? So if I was a shepherd, I'd bring my sheep into the sheep pen for protection, for whatever things I needed. i got to take this off. This jacket is driving me nuts. They would bring the sheep in and another shepherd would bring the sheep in. All the same sheep in. But the shepherd had such a relationship with his sheep that when he came in, he spoke to them. You see, I couldn't go to somebody else's sheep and talk to them and say, here, come on. They wouldn't follow me. But when the shepherd comes in that knows his sheep and the sheep know him, he called them out. And he called them out by name. He had a relationship with his sheep. Now you might think, that sounds stupid, right? But it's the way it is. He called his sheep out by name, whatever names they were, and they heard his voice. They knew his voice. Now I know it's just an animal, but they knew his voice. And he called them out. And they followed him. He didn't have to take, a, he didn't have to take his hook in there, his shepherd's hook, and start beating them and forcing them out of the sheep pen when it was time to go. He called them out, and whatever names he called, and they heard his voice, and they followed him. You see, that's the relationship that Jesus wants with each and every one of us. He wants that relationship so much to know that whatever you are in this world, and everything going on around the world, 
and all the claims and all the stuff going on. Then when he speaks to you, whether you're at work, whether you're at school, whether you're at home, even when you're in bed, when he speaks to you, that you hear his voice. Yeah. And you can recognize it and say, here I am. He said, a lot of us today as Christians are dealing with like, was that God? Or was that the devil? You need to be knowing the difference between those two people, folks. You need to know the difference between the two. Now, I know the devil speaks with a forked tongue and he speaks with twisting words, but you need to know as the Holy Spirit works on us and deals with us and talks to us, you know the difference. And it's time for us to stop making controversy out of the voice, the still small voice. This is the relationship that God desires with you. It's so, so vital. So vital to your well-being, not only physically, mentally, spiritually. Do you have a relationship with the Good Shepherd? Now, I know I didn't read that verse of Scripture this morning, but do you have a relationship with the Good Shepherd? Do you have a relationship with God so much to know that He cares for you that much that He wants you to have a relationship with Him? You see, I believe that's this threshold that we're on. God wants us to walk right through that door. But there's so much of us that's being held back because we're not listening. We're not humbling ourselves. We're not going forth with what God wants us to go forth with because we're still back here on the milk. And that's why today I'm talking to some of you that's been in this ministry for a long, long time. And I see others going by you in the Word. And you're like, Pastor, you're judging us now. No, I'm not. I'm your shepherd. I'm your pastor. I'm concerned about your spiritual well-being. Each and every one of you. Some of you are on the milk. They need to be on the milk. The Bible says sincerely desire, desire the sincere milk of the Word. Some of you are. That's where you're at. And that is just fine. Don't try to take in steak when you're only ready for milk right now. But some of you have been on the milk long enough. You need to be maturing and getting off of it. To get on the meat. And you're like, well, Pastor, what's I got to do with God caring for us? God cares for you so much. He wants you to grow. Yeah. He wants you to be healthy, spiritually. Yeah. Ultimately, God has a plan for you. Yeah. And He can't use you until you get to that point of maturity. Well, now, wait a minute. God can do anything. Yes, He can. But He won't use you until you're ready. I'll tell you that right now. God can grow us up. Yes, He can. He even told the, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, He said, don't you know I can take out of these rocks and raise up children of Abraham? Yeah. He can do that. Yeah. But He chooses not to do it that way. He wants to use you. I don't know how that makes you feel, but I know how that makes me feel. That humbles me. There's no coincidence of why I ran from the ministry, not only because of fear, but I ran from the ministry for a couple of years because at that point in my life, I just, I don't know, it's just overwhelming to think about it, the calling. But this is where I had to come to grips with. That I knew that if I humbled myself and I followed, I knew that God would provide. And that's where you need to be as well. You need to humble yourself today. You need to follow Him. He'll provide. Do you desire a walk with Jesus? Do you desire to know this good shepherd? Have you ever asked this question? Does God really care about me where I'm at? Now I'm going to get into the sermon. Now just to pray to you. Does God really care about me right now, today, where I'm at? Have you ever been there? Maybe some of you are here today in that state of mind. You're right now wondering if God really cares about you. If God cared about me, then why, you ask? This is a big question upon the hearts of a lot of people. I wouldn't say everybody because there's people out there that really don't care about God. 
of whether he cares for them or not. But some of you are in this point in life where you're wondering if God cares about you. You have concerns. We all have these concerns. These are just general, and there's some more specific that you can add into. The cares of this world can be something as, as a man, I have certain concerns, fathers, mothers, women, children. You care about things that's specifically to you in that area. And we need to be considerate of that, and I need to be considerate of that. What I might care about, it might be different for you, or you, whatever. We all have these cares, and we wonder if God cares about that. We care also for what's going to happen in our future, not only in the country, but what's going on around the world, maybe even what's going on today. We also, some of us are here today, we're concerned about what's going to take place in our church. Not only with the denomination, but with this building and how we're going to move forward and what's going to happen there financially. These are all legitimate concerns. Now, this is the question that I have for you. And you're asking God, does God really care? How often do you say this? How am I going to take care of the things I'm concerned about? How often do you do that? How often do you say, well, how am I going to get this done? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to work this out? Yeah. You ever do that? Yeah. I think that comes natural to us, doesn't it? Yeah. Every bit of that comes natural to us. How am I going to get this done? If we're not careful, this is how we will live our lives. I'm not telling you to lay down and be lazy. But we need to understand how we get priorities straight in our life. Now, after we worry about it and we start asking how we're going to take care of it, then we wonder, where's God at in all this? How come he's not helping me? Better listen to this, folks. A lot of us want God to get on board with what we're doing. I didn't write that one down. Somebody got that one down. That's good. <laughs> I like that. Some of us want God to get on board with what we're doing. God, I'm working hard in the church. I'm working hard doing this. Why aren't you helping me? You ever thought of that? Well, maybe the reason why God is not helping you, maybe you're not 